here and there. <laughs> so uh, I can claim that I am now a student of Prof Kamal officially. <laughs> I attended his classes. Alhamdulillah. Uh, for tonight, we have a special guest uh, by the name of uh, Papa Afif Amka. Uh, he is the ninth uh, child of out of ten sibling. Uh, from uh, Buya Hampa. Our schedule our tonight is we will invite him. Uh, Habib will invite uh, Pak Afif to say a uh, brief uh, word for 10 minutes. And then Prof. Kamal will continue uh, with the lecture. Uh, then we take question and answer and then we wrap, wrap up. We can take another extra 10-15 minutes tonight uh, by uh, 9.45. I see my professor Fatih Malkawi there. <laughs> How are you, Prof? Alhamdulillah, <laughs> from Jordan. So, uh, without further ado, I invite my dear Kiai, Pak Habib, to moderate the session. Pak Habib, are you unmute? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum. Alhamdulillah ala ala alladhi khalaqa fa shawwa walladhi kaffara fa da alladhi ala al-falah liman tazakka wa dhaka rasma rabbi fa shala Allahumma salli wa sallim ala hadha nabi mustafa wa ma'an abal huda ma'ba'ad Your respected brothers, professor, country, Kamal Hassan My dear brother, Dr. Anders, Afif Hamka, my dear friend, dear brother, Saharan Kasim, and all of the participants. It's indeed a great pleasure to see all of you tonight, and I would be happy to introduce my dear brother, Afif Hamka, whom I know him since last 40 years. And I'm happy tonight to introduce him as the director of the Center of Hamka Studies. Hamka Studies is established by the UHAMKA, University of Muhammadiyah, Professor Dr. Hamka in Jakarta. And actually, it was Established when I was there in the university, the early 1990s, led by her, uh, his uh, sister, one of the professor who has also worked very closely with the IT in the Islamic epistemology. And my dear brother, Afif Hamka, is currently also serving in the national education field. He is one of the chairperson in the board of national education, especially the primary and secondary education of Muhammadiyah, which now has more than 7,000 schools. But if we include the uh, pre schools, it has more than uh, 24,000 schools, including preschools. And so he has a big responsibility in the uh, education field. But he's also one of the chairperson in the uh, educational association under the Al-Azhar in Jakarta, which is very highly respected uh, educational center. And now it has also the University of Al-Azhar with a different what you call the field. But here I would like once again to express my sincere thanks and gratitude to my dear brother, uh, Afif Hamka, and I would be happy to translate whenever he need, but I think he doesn't need it. He knows uh, all of the Arabic as well as English, but maybe he prefer to speak in Bahasa. 
So thank you for your coming, my dear brother, Ustaz Afif. Amka faliyata faddal mashkuran. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Syukrulillah. Wala hawla wala quwata illa billah. Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. Muhammad ibni Abdullah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabi'ahu wa mawala. Saya menyebut tuan-tuan puak tuan-tuan saudara-saudara para cendekiawan muslim yang saya muliakan. Pertama-tama sekali saya merasa bahagia dapat hadir dalam forum ini maaf saya memakai pakai pakai bahasa Indonesia yang mudah saya sampaikan pertama-tama saya memperkenalkan diri saya nama saya Afif Afif Hamka saya putra ke sembilan dari sepuluh bersaudara kandung jadi <tuh> saya lahir di Jakarta pada Januari 1952 jadi masa-masa setelah almarhum Allah ya Raham Buya Hamka hijrah ke Jakarta. Hadir, hadirin yang saya hormati, saya ingin menjelaskan bagaimana Buya Hamka itu ternyata memang bukan hanya milik kami orang Indonesia tapi juga ternyata dicintai oleh masyarakat di Malaysia itu kami rasakan sekali lagi amat sangat ber berbahagia saya ingin menyampaikan di dalam istilah keluarga kami saya ini anak ke-9. Kami tiga orang yang lahir di Jakarta. Abang saya bernama Helmi, Helmi Hamka. Dia nomor 8. Saya nomor 9 dan adik saya yang bungsu namanya Amir Syakib yang ke-10. Anak Buya Hamka yang ke-10. Tapi ingin saya sampaikan ini, ada istilah, ada istilah di dalam keluarga kami, kalau ad, kalau saya anak ke-9, adik saya anak ke-10, ada istilah anak ke-11 Buya Hamka. Siapa mereka? Mereka adalah Orang-orang muda yang sudah seperti anak dari Buya Hamka. Mereka menganggap Buya Hamka sebagai ayah mereka. Saya punya pengalaman pada tahun usia saya masih di bawah 10 tahun dulu ya. Di tahun-tahun awal-awal tahun 60-an, 1960-an. Itu selalu biasa terjadi ke rumah kami itu Pemuda-pemuda dari Malaysia Mereka yang datang dari Malaysia ke Indonesia Ingin melanjutkan studi di perguruan tinggi di Indonesia Mereka mendarat di bandara di, di di airport 
waktu itu masih di Kemayoran. Mereka datang ke airport situ, berdarat, lalu mereka naik taksi, mengatakan kepada driver, taksi driver, minta diantar ke rumah Buya Hamka. Itu dari Malaysia. Lalu oleh taksi itu diantarlah ke rumah kami. Jadi tamu di rumah kami. Yang menarik, mereka itu me, bukan bukan hanya datang, tapi disambut oleh umi kami, juga ayah kami, disediakan bilik khusus untuk tamu-tamu kami itu. Dan mereka itu biasa sudah membiasakan diri memanggil Buya Hamka itu ayah. Memanggil umi kami itu umi. Seperti kami memanggil umi kami. Nah yang menarik, karena setelah di, mereka dilayani, kemudian subuh-subuh itu kami semua bangun dan berangkat ke Masjid Al-Azhar yang di depan rumah kami untuk sholat subuh. Nah kemudian setelah kira-kira jam 9 pagi, saya punya tugaslah mengantar mereka ini ke Kedutaan Besar Malaysia. Ketika itu masih di tempat yang lama di Jalan Budi Kemuliaan, Jakarta Pusat. Kalau kantor Kedutaan Besar Malaysia hari sekarang ini sudah berada di Kuningan, Jakarta Selatan. Jadi nanti sampai di sana orang dari Kedutaan Besar Malaysia itulah yang mengurus mereka ke tempat studi mereka. Ada yang di Gajah Mada di Yogyakarta, ada yang di Institut Teknologi Bandung di Bandung, ada pula yang di Jakarta atau di tempat Universitas Indonesia. Nah, itu mereka itu... Karena sudah seperti anak dan ayah, seperti keluarga kami, itu kalau liburan, holiday mereka, itu bukan pulang kampung ke Malaysia, tapi mereka pulang kampungnya ke rumah kami di Kebayoran Baru. Jadi, saya ingin mengingatkan juga, Ketika tahun lalu saya ke Malaysia ada jemputan acara acara apa itu namanya uh, silaturahim lah dengan para pencinta Buya Hamka. Saya ber, diantar oleh seorang pemuda saya sebutkan namanya Hafiz Hafiz. Saya kemarin menghubungi dia mengatakan acara ini mungkin insya Allah dia akan hadir akan ikut serta dalam acara di sini. Nah itu Hafiz sudah seperti adik saya dia menunjukkan foto foto ayahnya bersama Buya Hamka karena ayahnya itulah termasuk di antara orang yang kalau dat waktu datang melanjutkan sekolah di Universitas Indonesia, lalu sudah seperti keluarga kami sendiri. Saya ingatkan nama nama ayahnya itu Pak Su Muhammad Isa. Dia adalah kader abim di Kedah. Nah. Ini Pak Isa ini ketika masih mahasiswa di Jakarta, beliau itu pacaran, nah maaf ya, dengan orang Indo, dengan gadis Indonesia yang juga berstudi di Jakarta, asalnya dari Banjarmasin. Itu kalau Pak Isa itu ke rumah ayahnya di Kebayoran, ke rumah kami. Pernah juga diajak itu pacarnya itu. 
Nah yang menarik Mereka itu Kawin Tanggal 7 Mei 1977 Di Al-Azhar Dan disaksikan langsung oleh Ayah mereka Buya Hamka Nah begitulah Mudah-mudahan Pak Isa atau Adinda Hafiz hadir dalam acara kita ini. Tuan-tuan yang saya hormati, kita menyadari kehadiran Allah, Allah ya Raham Buya Hamka di dunia ini telah membawa berkah bagi kita dan membuka cakrawala ka, cakrawala ke ilmuwan yang semakin luas bagi para ilmuwan Islam. Padahal kita tahu di dalam sejarah Allah Yarham sendiri dia menulis satu buku tentang bio Autobiografi beliau Yang namanya Kenang-kenangan hidup Nah ini ingin saya sampaikan Bahwa di, Dia menceritakan Dari masa kecilnya Sampai Kemerdekaan Zamannya itulah Padahal kita tahu Allah ya Raham Buya Hamka itu pendidikan formalnya hanya kelas 2 sekolah desa di kampungnya, di kampung kelahirannya di Sungai Batang, Maninjau, Sumatera Barat di tepian Danau Maninjau Saya sempat membaca autobiografi beliau ketika beliau dilahirkan oleh ibundanya ketika begitu keluar dari rahim ibundanya itu bayi yang lahir itu masih terbungkus apa ari-ari apa ya ketuban ya Kantong ketuban. Masih utuh dalam kantong ketuban. Saya ingat ada dongeng dari mulut ke mulut. Katanya bayi yang lahir utuh dari rahim itu ber- terbungkus dengan ari-ari atau terbungkus kantong ketuban. Itu mempun- a- dewasanya akan menjadi orang jenius. Orang yang istimewa Itu dongengnya dari mulut ke mulut ya kita dengar begitu Tapi begitulah ternyata memang Buya Hamka itu dia lahir dalam terbungkus dari dengan ari-arinya itu Hadirin yang saya hormati Saya masih mengulangi betapa banyaknya Orang-orang yang sudah kami jadikan Anak ke-11 dari Ibu Yahamka Dan tentu mereka masih banyak yang, yang hidup Dari hati kami yang paling dalam Mengajak, mari saya mengajak Untuk disambung lagi itu silaturahim kita Karena memang Anak yang namanya Tanda kut and kut Anak ke-11 Buya Hamka itu Tidak sedikit, banyak sekali Bukan hanya orang-orang VIP 
VIP, tapi juga orang-orang biasa. Bahkan begitulah karena beliau itu sudah benar-benar dianggap sebagai ayah mereka. Antara lain yang saya sebutkan, Pak Su M. Muhammad Isa. Yang dari Kedah itu. Saya pernah ketika ke Malaysia, ada kawan mengajak saya ke toko buku. Toko bukunya di, di kawasan Sepang, apa ya, Sepang, dekat airport di Kuala Lumpur ya. Saya melihat ada buku-buku karya Buya Hamka di situ, dijual di toko buku itu. Lalu ketika saya tanya kepada pelayannya, Banyakkah buku-buku Buya Hamka di sini? Dia tunjukkan ada satu satu space di lemari. Dia tunjukkan buku-buku Buya Hamka, karangan-karang Buya Hamka. Itu buku-buku itu ada tenggelamnya kapal Van Der Weg di bawah lindungan Ka'bah, ada merantau ke Delhi dan banyak sekali. Ada tasawuf modern. Tapi Begitu saya lihat penerbitnya, satu pun tidak ada yang saya kenal penerbit-penerbit itu. Padahal yang saya lihat itu yang bertugas sebagai pelayan di toko buku itu pakai jilbab, pakai kerudung yang perempuan, yang laki-laki pakai kopiah putih, Lalu saya katakan, kalian ini menjual buku-buku Buya Hamka, tapi penerbitnya tidak saya kenal. Saya tunjukkan paspor saya dengan nama saya, lengkap Afif Hamka. Lalu saya katakan, ini bajakan. Penerbit-penerbit yang pembajak. Jadi bukan hanya itu, memang terasa sekali tidak sedikit penerbit-penerbit di Malaysia yang merompak karya-karya Allah Yarham Buya Hamka. Dan itu amat merugikan kami. Dalam forum ini saya menghimbau dengan amat sangat kepada tuan-tuan yang mungkin yang punya hubungan pernah kenal pada penerbit-penerbit itu kasih beri mohon diberitahu pada mereka perbuatan seperti itu perbuatan zalim merugikan dan Buya Hamka itu bukan hanya seorang alim seorang ulama tapi juga dia karomah karomahnya ada Hati-hati saya katakan nih da- dalam kesempatan ini. Hati-hati kepada para penerbit. Kami berdoa kepada Allah. Kezaliman Anda merompak hak kami. Itu akan dilaknat oleh Allah. Itu, itu saya himbau supaya mereka itu saya sebutkan. Antara lain ya, Crescent, Crescent Nu, penerbit Crescent Nu, ada lagi Pustaka Dini, itu menerbitkan buku-buku, tapi tidak pernah ada kontak dengan kami. Tuan-tuan yang saya hormati, kita menyadari seorang Buya Hamka yang sekolahnya cuma sampai kelas 2 sekolah dasar di kampung 
ternyata diakui sebagai sosok istimewa yang telah membuka cakrawala keilmuan bagi para ilmuwan Islam di mana-mana. Banyak sekali para akademisi yang berhasil mel- para akademisi yang berhasil mencapai gelar doktor di perguruan tinggi mereka masing-masing karena menyusun disertasi yang disertasi tentang pemikiran Allah Yarham Buya Hamka. Saya mohon maaf, saya sebutkan salah satu di antaranya. Semoga beliau hadir dalam forum ini. Puan Azizah Rahmat. Beliau menyusun disertasi dan itu tentang tentang pemikiran tasawuf modern yang ditulis oleh Buya Hamka. Kebetulan Profesor apa siapa Mas Habib yang Kamal. yang di Kamal. Nah, Profesor Kamal Hasan ya. itu seorang yang membimbing beliau Puan Azizah Rahmat. Semoga Puan Azizah Rahmat mengikuti acara ini. Kalau kita baca juga bagaimana Allah Yarham menulis tentang tafsir al-azhar. Tafsir al-azhar boleh dikatakan sebagai tafsir bacaan bagi bagi kita-kita yang berbahasa Melayu. Bahasanya sungguh dapat dipahami mudah dipahami oleh kita-kita yang berbahasa Melayu. Saya ingin me- menceritakan pengalaman saya bersama beliau. Buya Hamka memang tak lepas dari kegiatannya membaca, 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 dan menulis. Menulis itu dengan dua jari mesin ketik. Belum ada komputer pada masa itu. Belum ada laptop. Jadi dia pernah menjelas me, membimbing saya di antaranya perintah pertama yang disampaikan Allah kepada kita adalah membaca ikra. Lalu beliau menyebutkan membaca 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 ikra bismirab bikan ladhi khalaq khalaqal insana min alaq ikra warabbukal akramul ladhi allama bil qalam nah di sinilah mulai dia gabungkan antara membaca dan menulis alladhi allama bil qalam Dialah yang mengajarkan dengan pena. (tuh) 
menciptakan manusia dari sekumpal darah. Alamal insana malam ya'lam. Peringkat yang ke... Kita tahu Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam bukanlah seorang yang pandai membaca dan menulis. Beliau adalah ummi. Tidak pandai Ustaz membaca Afif, dan menulis. Ustaz, Ustaz Afif bisa pandai mem- ya. ya. Jadi kita bisa melihat bagaimana beliau mem- me- menggabungkan antara Ikra dengan alama bil kalam. Silakan Ustaz Afif. Ya. Yeah. Ya. Yeah. Di. Kalau kita membaca tafsir Al Azhar itu, disitulah beliau. menggabungkan memperkaya karya tafsir Al-Azhar itu dengan pendekatan sejarah, pendekatan sosiologi, pendekatan tasawuf, ilmu kalam, bahkan pendekatan sastra dan psikologi. Itu yang kita lihat dalam tafsir Al-Azhar itu. Terima kasih Pak Afif. Itu dulu oh, ya. Singkat. Saya ya. mengharap salam saya kepada Profesor Kamal Hasan. Salam saya kepada semua dan mohon dibukakan pintu silaturahim yang berlanjut penuh berkah. Semoga Kita berlanjut dengan ukhuwah yang yang berkah lah. Ya Mas Habib begitu. Terima kasih. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much my dear brother Afif Hamka. He is available to come and to share his uh, memories. Personal memories with uh, Professor Hamka, and I would like to extend this to Brother Sharon Kasim, please. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Afif. Insyaallah, we shall organize a separate program with Pak Afif, Mr. Afif, uh, in a different uh, session, uh, different time, so we can have more time to know Bu Hamka uh, privately, personally. I know uh, Pak Su very well. <laughs> I used to sleep in his house also. So I will tell him that uh, this story, inshallah. So without further ado, we invite our dear Prof to continue with our class. Prof, Prof Kamal. <coughs> okay. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, uh, very good evening to uh, all of you. Um, first of all, I'd like to um, extend my uh, salam to... Uh, uh, yang dimuliakan Pak Afif uh, juga Pak Habib Khirzin uh, for um, um, taking us back uh, to the um, you know nostalgic days of uh, Buya Hamka uh, and uh, listening uh, from his own son. Uh, I did not come to know Pak Afif, uh, but I was uh, quite uh, close. to Bang Rushdi Al-Marhum uh, when the, uh, in 1973, I used to go to uh, Masjid uh, Agung Kebayuran, uh, Masjid Al-Azhar Kebayuran, and, uh, because that was the office of Panji Masyarakat. Uh, and uh, Bang Rushdi was, was handling Panji Masyarakat. And Buya's house was very close. I used to go to uh, Buya's house and also to... Uh, to Uh, to meet uh, Bang Rushdi uh, in in his office, but uh, Adinda uh, Pa Afif, uh, I did not have uh, the honor to to meet him, but I have listened to him 
uh, several times uh, on YouTube, and also uh, I was able to also follow uh, his lecture in Malaysia on two occasions, but I was not able to attend. So thank you very much, uh, Pak Habib, for uh, bringing uh, Afif, uh, despite the fact that he has to undergo uh, some more uh, medical attention. So, Shafahullah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salam ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursaleen, Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana innaka anta al-alim al-hakim wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billahi al-ali al-azim. My dear uh, sisters and brothers, and of course, uh, Brother Shahran, uh, thank you very much. I would like to express my gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for making it possible for me tonight uh, to be able to um, share uh, my concluding uh, remarks on uh, the life and uh, thoughts of uh, Buya Hamka. Uh, in the last uh, session, in the last lecture, uh, that was a week ago, I, um, I discussed uh, four topics from his uh, Tafsir al-Azhar. Uh, that was one, the crisis of modern knowledge. Second, uh, the importance of uh, the impact of Zikrullah in the life of uh, the believers. And the third, the significance, uh, the spiritual, uh, intellectual, and um, uh, moral significance of uh, the dua iftitah and and finally the uh, the importance of uh, the ulul albab and uh, how uh, the intellectuals uh, the muslim intellectuals should actually emulate the example of the ulul albab and buya hamka alhamdulillah uh, managed to highlight the importance of these four topics that i chose at random uh, last week. And tonight, uh, before I conclude, I would like to share another three topics uh, from, uh, from his uh, Tafsir al-Azhar. The first one is uh, on the, the, you know, the attributes of Ibadur Rahman and how uh, we need to, to inculcate within ourselves uh, the, the attributes, the sifat, uh, the characteristics of uh, the Ibadur Rahman or the servant. Prof, you are mute, Prof. Uh, yes. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. The second topic is on the Ummah Wasat, uh, the uh, middlemost uh, or the uh, justly balanced uh, Ummah, uh, which is uh, from the uh, Al Baqarah uh, 143. And the third one, the last one, is the idea of. Um, of um, uh, the, the fact that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken, has bought the lives of believers. Uh, this is from, uh, from uh, Surah At-Tawbah 111. So these are the three topics that I like to share with you right now and how uh, we could um, benefit from the tafsir given by Buya Hamka. The first one on the uh, Ibadur Rahman, which is from uh, Surah Al Furqan, uh, verses 63 to 74. Um, now, um, we, we have um, uh, realized um, from the previous uh, lecture how uh, important is the, uh, the uh, how, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, expresses. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, Brother Shahran, yes. I'm sorry, I have this uh, technical uh, interruption, uh, you know, just one or two seconds. So okay. you, you don't need to unmute the others or yes. you don't need to mute the others because it will come back. I do not know why this is happening. <laughs> okay, bro. <laughs> My location uh, in, in Banabaru Bangi or I do not know some technical yeah. stuff. Uh, but, we will be patient, bro. No problem. Okay, all right. We will have to extend this period. So I was uh, telling you about the the importance of uh, the uh, the Ibadul Rahman, uh, the slave of the compassionate uh, master. Now, um, Buya Hamka says, in order to imbibe uh, the meanings of uh, of uh, Ibadul Rahman in the soul, uh, you have to read. Uh, the uh, this ayat, uh, the um, the uh, uh, well maybe more than the eleven ayats uh, of uh, Surah Al Furqan uh, with khushu it says. Uh, Sorry for another interruption. Hello. Hello. Yeah, Prof, give, give us one minute. We will uh oh. adjust. We good. will adjust. Good. If you can if you can uh, do yeah. something at your end. Okay, we will, okay, we will withdraw your co-host. Oh okay. okay. I see. I see. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, okay good. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so he, he was saying that um, um, that uh, we have to really study this uh, this business very well because this uh, the attributes of the Ibadur Rahman uh, should be our attributes. It is not the attribute of of uh, some people in the uh, in the uh, ancient times. Uh, this should be the attributes of 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 the believers of today, including the uh, uh, the political masters uh, in the Muslim world, we have to remember that they are ibadul Rahman. Okay, so um, uh, Buya says we should feel small uh, when when we read these verses. Oh, <laughs> okay. We don't know why this happened. Anyone knows? Oh, um, uh, hello. Yeah, yeah, still here. Yeah. Okay then. Yeah. yeah. Um, so he 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 stresses the importance of uh, imbibing uh, the attributes of uh, the Ibadur Rahman, uh, so that this will lead, he says, to our voluntary desire to serve Allah, and this uh, the the basis. Hello. Yes, bro. Okay. <laughs> it didn't <Sorry>. become serious. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's off and on now. Yeah. Um, so um, he says the the basis of this voluntariness is zikr and shukur, remembrance of Allah, and then uh, being uh, being grateful to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So shukur and uh, and zikrullah are the two important uh, attributes in the personality. Of the Ibadul Rahman. Uh, also, he says, uh, living and working on uh, among the other characteristics of the Ibadul Rahman are uh, as follows. Number one is that um, uh, the Ibadul Rahman uh, lives in the world with humility, uh, with uh, with adab, with proper etiquette, with gentleness, 
not arrogant, not coarse, uh, and uh, his attitude should be one of calmness. Uh, so, so gentleness, calmness, humility, etiquette, these are the attributes. Okay. Yes, bro. Yeah, let's give it to you. Okay, then, then the second, uh, second uh, characteristic is uh, to, to, to love spending the night in prayer, in Jud, without much sleep, and uh, because uh, you want to, uh, to uh, be in contact with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, if possible, every night. So this is an advice coming from Buya uh, to the Muslims of today. Because Yes, bro. Okay. So, uh, because he was uh, practicing this uh, uh, in, in his, uh, even in his uh, young, uh, youthful days. And because of this uh, nightly uh, conversation and communication and communion with Allah, he developed this uh, love for Allah and then fear uh, of the suffering uh, in, in hell. Um, and uh, and then they also realize that they are vulnerable to the temptations of 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 hawa or desire. Yes, and, okay, the third, the third characteristic of the Ibad rahman is that uh, they are able to maintain equilibrium or balance uh, in the economic consumption. Uh, they are neither extravagant nor stingy, and and, and they, um, um, they 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 manage to strike uh, a balance. And uh, they, they, so they lead the life of what he says, a qawama, uh, upright but balanced. Uh, and, um, uh, and they know that. Um, Okay, now I, I go to the uh, fourth. The fourth uh, characteristic is that um, uh, they are very, very concerned about falling into shirk. You know, um, um, shirk is, is the greatest sin and the, uh, the most abhorrent of sins. So they, they are very, very concerned uh, with what they say, what they do. Uh, not to be uh, seen as as um, involving any element of shirk. Um, then uh, Buya says that um, some Ahli Tasawuf, uh, Buya mentions, some Ahli Tasawuf said the person who regretted uh, or who repented um, from sin um, and... Um, uh, is more pure of heart than the one who is proud, thinking that they have not sinned. So, you know, the Abad rahman uh, is always in the attitude of repentance uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the fifth, uh, the fifth,
Yeah, the fifth uh, characteristic is that uh, Ibadur Rahman do not make a false witnessing when they uh, or when they pass by useless activities uh, among Kosong places, uh, uh, then they just pass by with dignity. You know, not with contempt, but with dignity. Uh, kiraman. Uh, and, and this is important. And number six, sixth quality is they are always reminded, uh, being reminded uh, about God. Uh, so, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, we are says, uh, represent the truth. And the truth is the voice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, uh, Abad al-Rahman uh, are always looking forward uh, to uh, be guided by the truth from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Abad al-Rahman realizes that Ad-dunya mata' wa khayru mata'iha al-mar'atu saliha. That this dunya, it is a passing pleasure, and and the best of uh, is is uh, uh, um, um, pious, a uh, righteous, uh, a virtuous uh, woman or wife. Um, then uh, I like to say that um, uh, the Ibadur Rahman also. Um, uh, wanted to be uh, leaders, imams of the God-fearing. Yeah? Imam al-muttaqin. Yeah? They ask Allah to make them imam uh, for the taqeen. Uh, I think this is a very co- important concept of leadership. Imam is, is also a leader. Leader of the muttaqin. Uh, so those who want to become leaders should aspire to be leaders of uh, uh, okay, bro. Okay, but in today's world, um, Leaders are not leaders of muttaqin uh, because, you know, first the leaders are self-centered, power crazy, and uh, very prone to corruption. And we have many of them in the Muslim world, including in Malaysia. Uh, so I would like to conclude on this Ibad uh, rahman and then I will go to, uh, to the second one. Now, the second... Uh, the second topic is um, about okay. okay. The second topic is Umma Wasat. Here, I I I I chose this. And I would like maybe afterwards in the Q&A, maybe uh, Habib Khirzin might be able to explain. I brought this up because, you know, uh, Allah says in the Quran, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah 143, And thus we have appointed you as the uh, justly balanced uh, uh, so that uh, you will become witnesses unto mankind and that the Prophet will become a witness unto you. Now, this is a very important uh, ayat in the Quran because it tells us what the goal of the community should be. That is to be uh, Ummah Wasat. Uh, Allah Himself has assigned this, this, um, this uh, responsibility to all of us. Uh, but 
I, uh, I found in the, in the tafsir of uh, Buya, um, which is quite different from, from Ibn Kathir's uh, tafsir. Uh, Ibn Kathir um, translates Ummah Wasat as a um, just and best community. Yeah, just and best community that is uh, uh, that is uh, 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 Adlan uh, and also Khiyara. Um, uh, in, in Malay, uh, Indonesia, Ibn Kathir would define this Okay, so uh, I, I was wondering why is it that um, Buya, uh, uh, oh, well, sorry, Ibn Kathir, many, many other classical commentators, Mufassirun, define Ummat al Wasata by saying that this refers to the Ummah that is just Adil, uh, it is the best uh, Khiyar, and also, uh, uh, you know, balance. I'atidal uh, or tawazun, but uh, Buya um, gives um, his uh, translation as umat yang di tengah, umat yang di tengah. So this is also following uh, some of the modern commentators like um, like Sayyid Qutub and uh, uh, and others, uh, and, and and Buya emphasizes the fact of being in the middle, yeah. Uh, between between two extremes, uh, di tengah-tengah antara dua uh, dua uh, dua apa orientasi yang I I do not know the reason why. Uh, Buya does not emphasize uh, number one the the characteristic of Adil, because all the classical commentators always mention uh, Adil or Aduna and then uh, Yara and and so on. But Buya talks of being in the middle. Uh, discussion of this. Uh, uh, becoming a justly, just, uh, justly balanced ummah. The, the reason is So Buya did not discuss uh, this meaning of uh, whereas all the other classical commentators discuss uh, this aspect of uh, they are just and uh, excellent and um, uh, balanced in order to become uh, witnesses for mankind uh, in the hereafter and also in this world. Now, all the classical commentators talk about this, but Buya did not. Oh, so I, I was really wondering why Buya did not discuss the ayla for the, uh, for the ayah uh, that is litakunu shuhada ala nas. So maybe uh, maybe uh, Pak Habib can explain, or maybe if uh, Pak Hafif uh, is still there, maybe Pak Hafif could explain uh, why Buya did not discuss the aspect of shuhada ala nas and also. Uh, the, the justice part of, of the, uh, the justice uh, attribute of the Ummah Wasat. Okay. Um, and then I will um, I will come to the um, to the third 
uh, and last uh, topic that I want to share with with uh, uh, participants tonight, and that is, uh, you know, the ayat from uh, Surah at tawbah 100. The ayah 111, I mentioned earlier. So let me translate uh, what I, I recited earlier. Indeed, Allah has bought the lives, the properties of the believer. In exchange, they will, they will have paradise. They will have al-jannah. And so they, they fight in the path of Allah. They are slain and they get slain. Uh, and this is a promise uh, binding upon Allah in the Quran, in the Torah, in the Injil, and the Quran, and then who is truer to his covenant than Allah? So you should rejoice in your bargain which you have contracted, for that is the supreme triumph. And then Allah uh, follows with with the with another ayah, one hundred and twelve. Al-Ta'ibun so uh, Allah then uh, explains the different types of, of the Yeah, bro. Go ahead. yeah, the different types of, of believers. So I, I will try to r- rush now. Uh, what is important is that uh, we, the believers, and 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 mu'minun all over the world in Indonesia, in Malaysia, must realize that as mu'minun, we do not own anything anymore. Our own ourselves and our properties have been bought over by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. We don't own. Uh, anything anymore, but but people today forgot that, and they think they own, and 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 they're striving for power. Even power does not belong to us; it belongs to Allah. Uh, and uh, but Allah gives that power as an amana. But people think that power is their right, and they are they they struggle to get power in politics or wealth in, in economy or um, uh, or uh, uh, to be uh, hegemonic power in control of other nations uh, because people, uh, human beings, uh, and even Muslims do not realize okay, bro. the Muslims all over the world, including the leaders, uh, forget that we do not own anything. So I want to emphasize this point. Uh, after talking about uh, Ummat and Wasata, that we are supposed to be the most just, we are supposed to be the best, we are supposed to be balanced, right? We are supposed to be witnesses for mankind. How can we be witnesses when we are not just, we are not the best, we are not the most balanced, and we think we own everything. We forgot that we, everything that we have has been taken over by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and He is going to give us Al-Jannah, uh, as a price for what uh, Allah has taken from us. So I would like to, to uh, now to come uh, to the conclusion, uh, just a few pages I will share with you. Uh, this is what I, I wrote uh, some time ago. We have seen, uh, brothers and sisters, that Buya Hamka uh, has devoted his whole life to the strengthening uh, of the Islamic way of life, to the reform of the Muslim community, particularly in Indonesia and also in the Malay world. Uh, 
and through his uh, creative writings, um, his religious leadership of urban Indonesia, uh, and so on. Um, now, uh, I have been wondering, and um, I think, of course, uh, Buya, uh, uh, sorry, uh, 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 Adinda um, Afif uh, would, would be able to, to, to explain. Uh, what kept Buya going, slogging, laboring, writing prolifically, critiquing uh, the new strategies of uh, de-Islamization in, in Indonesia and also Christian evangelization. And then he also uh, critic, uh, uh, criticized the uh, religionization of indigenous mysticism that is the Kabatinan, uh, although he did it in a very moderate way. And finally, before his death, he resigned from a high national position of socio-religious leadership on a matter of principle. Uh, so I, I, uh, my feeling from what I have read is that uh, Buya Hamka was able to do all this because of his deep-rooted and profound spirituality. Kerohanian uh, yang amat dalam dan suci, which sprang not from the fountain of mysticism or kebatinan or tariqah, sufiya, but from the pure light of absolutely uncompromising monotheism. This is the aqidah of Tawheed. Uh, that Allah has has cast into his qalb, into his heart, after years of living in continuous proximity uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also studying the Qur'an from his early years, inspired by the seerah of the Prophet and also the uh, incomparable personality of uh, of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and uh, also the companions uh, and uh, Buya was able to, to attain all these uh, qualities within the context of a uh, highly um, active uh, socio-political engagement, uh, but uh, on the basis of peace. And, uh, uh, and um, um, okay, now I would like to say that his spirituality uh, is in fact the spirituality of pure love, cinta. Uh, I, I remember what uh, uh, Dr. Tafik Ismail uh, said in his foreword to the book by, uh, by uh, I think, by, uh, by Adinda Erfan, um, uh, I think, Erfan uh, uh, Hamka. Uh, Tafik said that the philosophy of Yeah, the philosophy of life, according to Dr. Taufik Ismail, of, of Buya Hamka was, was love, cinta, mahabba of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a very important thing because not many people have reached this level of spiritual elevation as, as, as Buya. Uh, and, and we need to emulate the, uh, the making love, cinta, uh, not, not, uh, you know, dogmatism or uh, or uh, uh, as as the uh, as the characteristic of of the ibadur rahman, um, but uh, love, uh, loving Allah subhanahu wa taala, loving the servants of Allah, loving nature. So Buya, as a man of sastra of culture, really uh, exemplified this this uh, quality of of love of of the of the uh, pure uh, and true believers uh, in the Aqidah of Tawheed. Um, uh, nourished uh, by, uh, by Iman, uh, Ilm, Taqwa, Khawf, Tashya, Raja, Ihsan, and Mahabba, 
the heart of Hamka is the qalb of an alim with the attribute of khashyatullah. It is also the qalb of the ulul albab. Uh, and of course the qalb also of the ibadur rahman. Uh, and, and the ulul albab uh, integrate uh, uh, dhikr and fikr uh, and dunya and akhirah. Uh, the personality of, of Buya uh, reflects the aura of humility of the ibadur rahman and the manifestation of the true believers' love of Allah, uh, as uh, we know in Surah Al-Baqarah 1, uh, Ayat 165, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ The who have believed have uh, the greatest love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, I'm coming to the uh, last few um, uh, paragraphs. Uh, Hamka has given a lot of attention uh, in his Sufi-oriented works to the dangers of the diseases of the spiritual heart, penyakit penyakit kalbu, uh, which uh, he read in the books of Abu Talib al makki uh, Imam al Ghazali, and also uh, Ibn Qayyim uh, al Jauziyah. He was aware that those diseases which have affected many Muslim leaders, like, you know, uh, Riyya, Takabur, Ujub, um, and Hubbul, uh, Hubbul Dunya, Hubbul Riyasa, uh, Hubbul Mal, and all that. Those are uh, serious diseases. Um, and, uh, and, and these diseases in today's world uh, um, affect the Muslim leaders and intellectuals and leaders and uh, make them uh, people who do not have integrity. Uh, they become the, you know, uh, corrupt leaders uh, in the Muslim world. Uh, and so uh, Buya follows the footsteps, uh, not of, of the political leaders, but the footsteps of Al-Ghazali by adopting uh, the writings of, of, uh, of Al-Ghazali in his uh, Al-Munjiyad, uh, uh, the last quarter of, of Ihya al -Muddin. Now I come to the last paragraph now. In light of the fact that many Muslim national and political leaders, as well as the elites, uh, have succumbed in one way or the other to the ghurur of the pleasures. Ghurur uh, means deceptions, uh, delusions, or seductions of the pleasures of the world. Um, uh, the, it is very, very important, urgent, that the uh, educational curricula uh, in Muslim educational systems uh, must uh, strengthen the ethical values uh, and so ethical practices um, um, based on the examples of our great uh, leaders of the past, including, uh, of course, uh, the example of the Prophet وسلم, and the great companions. The Malay Tunisian. Uh, this is my last sentence. The Malay Indonesian world has produced a world-class uh, Islamic thinker, uh, 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 intellectual genius, uh, a great uh, scholar who combines traditionalism with, with modernity, and one of the best tafsirs in, uh, in the modern period, and not just in the Malay, Malay Indonesian world, but... Uh, uh, in, at, at the world level, and he has left behind a great legacy for the younger generation of Muslims in Indonesia and in Malaysia to follow.
So I would like uh, to thank um, uh, Triple I uh, East Asia and, and Brother Shahram for moderating. Uh, I'm very sorry for these technical interruptions, uh, but I hope the message has been sent and uh, you have extended the time by uh, 20 minutes, which is good. Uh, we benefited also from the um, talk by uh, Adinda uh, Afif. Uh, we hope that he gets well, inshallah, because but Habib told me this today that uh, he was supposed to go for uh, physiotherapy this evening, uh, but he cancelled it because of this. So, uh, alhamdulillah, we, saw, uh, we hope he gets better and better, inshallah. So, aqul qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaykum assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, Prof. Uh, I think the hikmah with the, behind this technical problem is that we have to get you one more time. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I, will, I will talk, I will call you, I will communicate with you maybe not next week, maybe the other weeks uh, that we, uh, only for discussion. Uh, you don't have to present anything uh, so the brothers can come and voice. Uh, yeah. let, let, us, let us discuss this in... Uh, an email. Yeah, uh, probably. Yeah, uh, let's sure. discuss it in, in email. So you please yeah. email me. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a solution, but as you said, you have to log out and then log in again. But we don't want to disrupt your 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 your, your mood uh, of presenting. Uh, that's why uh, we continue. Now I think we miss you. Okay, Prof. Phil, this is. So uh, I think we, um, we, we conclude for tonight. Uh, we will communicate with Prof. You have another session just for discussions. So Prof don't have to prepare uh, this class, but we will just respond. Uh, thank you so much, Pak Habib. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ustaz Hafif. Uh, Ustaz Hafif. Uh, briefly, what uh, our dear Ustaz Hafif is saying is that uh, from the late uh, Buya Hamkau was very close with the Malaysian student. Uh, in fact, he has been, he was there helping them. Whenever they came to Jakarta, they will go to his house first. Uh, there's one part of the story. And then the other part is when, when uh, Buya Hamka was born, he was born with the biblical court uh, intact. That's what I understood. This is what the miraculous born. Uh, and then... Uh, uh, Afif was commenting about few of our publishers in Malaysia. Uh, they call it illegal publishing, which is uh, very bad for the author and for the families. Uh, you can use the, the proceed, uh, if not for the families, for the, uh, I mean, for to, to help education matters. So we will pursue that. If we find that uh, unauthorized publication, we will remind them. And lastly, Brother Sharan, uh, Brother yes, Sharan. Yes, bro, go ahead. Uh, if you can unmute uh, Habib, because I like okay, sure. uh, him to hear yeah. uh, this, because, you know, I was, I was wondering, uh, when I compare Buya's tafsir on the Ummah uh, Wasat with, uh, with, with, uh, with from Al-Tadari all the way down Zamakhshari and, uh, you know, um, all the rest until Ibn Kathir, they all talk about, uh, you know, justice, excellence, and balance, all right? And then they talk about shuhada ala nas. And they all discuss this shuhada ala nas uh, and that the, the will be uh, in the other day of judgment. Uh, but uh, the modern commentators is, is in this world as well as on the day of judgment. Babi, go ahead. Thank you. I would love to express my sincere thanks and gratitude to Professor Hassan and also my highest appreciation for this comprehensive and enlightening uh, exposition on Buya Hamka. And in the end, I would like also to relate what uh, Brother Afi made in the beginning with what uh, Professor Kamal put uh, very beautifully that Buya Hamka, uh, when he talked 
It was based on love and peace. And that's uh, based on the uh, any pure uh, Tawheed, the pure Tawheed that brought him to love all of the Malaysian friends. <laughs> and and they called them as the 11 son <laughs> within their sibling. Yeah? So I would relate this uh, what the uh, pure what you call the religiosity, yeah. religiosity and spirituality brought him to the state of mind, state of heart, that his love is so broad, yeah. his love is so pure, for not only for their sibling, I mean the uh, person who are in, the, in his family, but to all brothers and sisters, came to his home, who learned from him. So he deemed them as the as the as the, the family. And secondly, again uh, Professor uh, Hamal brought us to understand because we read we read Hamka, but in the reading of Professor Hamal, uh, how he read, okay, how give he gave a meaning it's a problem of meaning, problem of reading and problem of meaning of uh, uh, Professor Kamal. I would love to thank him once again for his comprehensive and enlightening understanding, very beautiful reading <laughs> on Hamka. It's really beautiful, uh, Professor Hamka. So thank you, Professor. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam Thank you, Pak Habib. Thank you very much, Pak Habib. Okay, Prof, can we uh, okay. uh, end for tonight? Uh, yes. we, will, we will be in touch for another special uh, discussion session. Uh, so thank you, everyone, uh, for the technical reason. Uh, we, we were very smooth for the last six <laughs> lectures. Only for tonight, we have a small glitches. Inshallah, I will communicate with Prof. Kamal. Uh, we will arrange, not next week, maybe next two or three weeks, we will have a special session. Uh, we were also planning, uh, planning the, uh, to invite a few friends who, uh, who published thesis or, uh, on uh, Prof. Hamka, like one Sabri, we have Pro, uh, Dr. Aziza with us, we have uh, Dr. Fadila, also writing on Hamka, we have Prof. Uh, Mashita, and few others. So we will get in touch with them. So maybe in that uh, discussion session, they can join us. So thank you, everyone. Uh, this is not the last class, we promise. Uh, we will meet again. Uh, we will keep the one, everyone uh, updated. Inshallah, we'll be in touch. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, Pabib. Say our salam to Ustaz Hafiz. We'll see you again. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.